Greetings everyone. Welcome to the AOS 6 10.13 update series. I am Shobna, Technical Marketing Engineer for Aruba Campus Switching. So in this episode, we will learn about the 10.13 feature enable colorless ports for dual port APs. So let's proceed with the session. First, let's start with the overview. First, let's understand the difference between colored and colorless ports in this overview slide. The wired network ports in the past were colored with static configurations like yellow LAN, blue LAN, red LAN to help identify networks and keep them segmented. The static port configurations like VLAN and ACL required manual provisioning to bring up new devices. And this approach was not scaling up well and it resulted in misconfiguration and became time consuming as well as the admin has to note down to which port is which network. So clearly we need to figure out a way to uncolor our ports. So eventually dynamic segmentation took over from a centralized policy manager for instance radius so that we no longer needed the static configuration. So the end result is no more colored ports. So we no longer take care about what gets plugged in as part of this colorless port configuration. So what does a colorless port configuration look like is shown here. So we onboarded the ports through .onux or MAC authentication concurrently. And we forward the authentication request to a radius server like ClearPass policy manager. ClearPass can then profile the device and automatically return a rule to the switch to map the device with the specific VLAN and apply any access restrictions automatically. So this configuration only need to ever get pushed once for the colorless ports and it is never touched again. And this becomes a major advantage of colorless port compared to the colored port. So let's understand the behavior of dual port APs prior to 10.13 release. So how this dual port APs has been deployed before 10.13 release. So these dual port APs could be deployed only using colored port configuration instead of colorless port. So let's see the reason behind it. So consider a dual port AP deployment where we have two ports of the AP, E0 connected to one member of a VSF, E1 connected to a different member of VSF for the path and then PoE redundancy. So these APs can be onboarded either using device profile authentication or using MAC authentication from the external radius server. So by default, our AOS CX switches uses only the chassis MAC of LLDP packet for MAC or device profile authentication. So that means we will try to identify the chassis MAC from the LLDP packet and use that MAC for triggering MAC or device profile authentication. But in case of LLDP packets from the dual port AP, the chassis MAC remains the same. So this results in MAC move. So consider the example of packet capture from a dual port AP of type 555. So this is LLDP capture from the E0 interface and this is LLDP capture from the E1 interface. So from the E0 interface, you could see the source MAC address will be the E0's interface ID and then the chassis MAC will be the same E0's MAC address. So let's consider the ETH1 LLDP packet capture. Here the source MAC address for the LLDP packet will be the ETH1 interface MAC address but the chassis MAC is the ETH0's MAC address. So the chassis MAC address remains the same if the LLDP packets are coming from ETH0 or the ETH1 interface of the AP. As we are using only the chassis MAC for triggering the LLDP packets, so the chassis MAC remains the same in both the ETH0 and ETH1 interfaces and this will result in MAC move. So to overcome the MAC move, what we will try to do is we will try to completely disable the LLDP authentication on this dual port connected APs. So we will try to use the CLI no AAA authentication port access allow LLDP or. So by default we will do the authentication using LLDP but with this CLI we will try to disable the LLDP authentication. In this CLI we will try to configured specific to the client ports where the dual port AP is been connected. Hence, this configuration will be a colored configuration instead of a colorless configuration we follow for all the ports in the switch. So that is the reason 
with dual port APs prior to 1013, we could do the deployment only with the colored port, not with the colorless port. So let me summarize the configuration prior to 1013. So we will do the colorless port configuration for client ports which are not connected with dual port APs. So this will be the colorless port configuration for those in clients connected ports. But in case of dual port connected AP ports, we will try to make it as a colored configuration. Reason being is when you try to compare this configuration and the one in the right side, you will see there is an additional configuration of disabling the LLTP authentication. Hence, the dual port connected AP ports will be a colored port configuration. Here is the main picture. Let's understand the enhancement in 1013 to support colorless dual port AP deployment. So far, we have seen the address move issue captured as part of dual port AP deployment and to overcome that, we use the LLDP authentication disablement. So that become a colored port configuration in the dual port AP connected ports. So to overcome both the issues, we have an enhancement to use those MAC address in the LLDP packet for triggering MAC or device profile authentication to successfully onboard the dual port APs. So here is the packet capture from the dual port APs. The one on the left side is from ETH0, the other one is from the ETH1 port. So if you could see here, even though the chassis MAC address remains the same from the LLDP packets from the dual port APs, the source MAC address for the LLDP packet is different. It is the interface MAC address of the dual port APs. So going forward, we will use only the source MAC address for triggering the LLDP authentication. How can we achieve this? So we'll be using a new CLI sub option to select the MAC address type used for triggering the authentication from the LLDP packets. So there will be a new CLI AAA authentication port taxes allow LLDP auth and then a sub option called MAC. So in that we have luxury to select either the chassis MAC address for triggering the MAC authentication or the source MAC address from the LLDP packet. So this feature is supported in all port access security enabled platforms listed here. So with this enhancement, let's see the new colorless port configuration. The one on the left side is the existing colorless port configuration and the new colorless configuration is there in the right side. So here we will try to make the same configuration across all the client connected ports in the switch and even this configuration will support dual port APs and it will not have any impact to the other end clients as well. Hence, this configuration will be the new colorless port configuration. So if you could see the difference here is we are trying to do the LLDP authentication via only the source MAC address instead of the chassis MAC address to support dual port APs. Use cases. So let's understand the use case behind this feature. The main use case of this feature is the enterprise campus where the dual port AP will be connected to the access layer for providing the network access to the wireless clients behind it. So these APs will be tunneled to the gateway. So these APs can be deployed in two ways in an enterprise campus. So in case of a 6300 VSF stack, the so one port can be connected to the conductor the other port to the standby or member for providing the path and the PoE redundancy. So next is the chassis base 6400 switches. In those switches, they can be connected to a different LCs. Even here, they can provide a path and then a PoE redundancy. So the major objective of connecting a dual port AP in enterprise access switches is for better wireless service reliability and performance. So let's understand how it can be achievable. So the APs can be connected to the access switches using following different approaches. So the first one is single uplink. That means there will be only one port of AP connected to the access port. So this can be securely onboarded using .NX Mac or device profile authentication. But the problem with this deployment is there is no PUR path redundancy as well as there is no aggregated throughput as there is only single link to the AP from the switch. So next comes the active and standby mode. 
So in this mode, only the one of the interfaces of the AP will remain in the active mode. The other will be in the standby mode. So only when the active port goes down, the standby port will remain as an active port. Since this is the active standby deployment and it's been majorly used in our enterprise access use cases. So this can be securely onboarded using dot on X Mac or device profile authentication. And we have dual links connected to the APs. So we could achieve PoA redundancy and path redundancy in case of one port going down, the other port can able to regain the PoA as well as the path. But there is no aggregated throughput. So next comes the active active mode where both the interfaces will remain in the active state. So this has been configurable only using LACP enablement in the AP. So how from the switch we can able to secure them. So we could do only the secure onboarding of this dual port APs with LACP enablement using device profile over LAN. So that is a 1013 feature available as part of the 1013 release. So with that feature, we could achieve PoA redundancy, path redundancy, and since it is a lag interface, there is possibility of aggregated throughput. Let's jump into the configuration part. Here is the new ceiling introduced as part of this feature update. So to configure the MAC address type to be used for LLDP MAC authentication, the CLI will be AAA authentication port access allow LLDP auth and the new sub option is MAC where we have two options to select default is chassis MAC or if we wanted to support dual port APs we need to use the source MAC. There is no dedicated show command to view the configuration we can use the show run interface and try to grip it with this allow LLDP auth CLA sub option. So next comes the configuration via REST API post. So this is a interface level configuration. So we have to go to the system interfaces context and do a post. So here the configuration of our interest is who taxes LLDP authentication MAC type. So by default, it is the chassis MAC. We can modify it to use source MAC as well. So next comes the REST API get call. So how we can identify the configuration via REST API Git. As I said earlier, so this is available in the interface context only. So we have to go to system interfaces and then particular interface get method. And for our interest, we can select the column as port access LLDP authentication MAC and depth as 2. So once you try to execute this REST API Git method, you will be able to find the port access LLDP authentication MAC type configured in the interface. So currently it has been configured as a source MAC. So next comes the troubleshooting part. To troubleshoot any issues with respect to this feature, we would recommend to enable debug port access or debug CLI. So you can redirect this debug to either a buffer, console file or syslog. So here is the sample port access model debug buffer output. So this debug buffer output has been captured when the LLDP authentication trigger is happening via the chassis MAC address. So it clearly shows there is a address move happening between the ports 113 and then the 213. So with this we can easily identify there is a need for enabling the LLDP authentication trigger via the source MAC instead of the chassis MAC. So next comes the demo part. So for this demo, I'll be using a three layer topology where the access switch has been connected to aggregation and then core and APs will be connected to the access switch. So the access switch I'm using here is a two member 6300 VSF stack and the AP is AP555. It's a dual port AP where the E0 port of the AP is connected to third port of the conductor and then the E1 port of the AP has been connected to the third port of the standby switch in a access 6300 VSF switch. This is a purely a colorless port configuration. So I'm trying to enable the same configuration for both the dual port connected APs. So once the AP has been successfully onboarded, I'll be ascending with a role called dual port AP with auth mode as device mode. For dual port APs, the recommended auth mode is only device mode. We cannot use the client mode for the dual port AP deployment. 
So let's see the demo now. So here is the switch configuration for the dual port APs. So the 113 port has been connected with E0 port of AP and 213 connected with the E1 port of the AP. So these are the colorless port configuration. So let me enable the debug port access all for it to troubleshoot any issues with respect to this feature. So let me clear the debug and start it from the scratch. So let me bring up both the dual port AP ports. So now let's check the show port access client's output in a repeated way. So if you could see here, first that AP has been onboarded in 213 port. Now the same MAC address has been onboarded in 113 port as well. So the reason being is we are using the chassis MAC address as the MAC authentication trigger by default. So this has resulted in the address move scenario. You could cross check in the debug buffer output as well for the port access model. So I'm trying to grip it with the keyword move. So this debug buffer clearly shows the client has been moved from 213 port to 113 port. The reason being here is it's the same MAC address that is getting onboarded in both the ports. So let's overcome this by trying to disable the LLDP authentication entirely in the AP connected ports. This was a workaround followed prior to 1013. But this is a colored port configuration. Reason being is this configuration cannot be applied to the other ports in the switch. They need to be authenticated via LLDP. So if you could see here, only one of the port has been onboarded successfully now. That is the E0 port. So the reason being is we have disabled the LLDP authentication in the AP connected ports and AP is in active standby mode and only the E0 port will be active and it will be using it for both the control and data plane. But the E1 port will be sending only LLDP packets and that too we have disabled the authentication trigger via LLDP hence that port is not getting onboarded. So now we will try to enable the 1030 enhancement feature. So for that purpose, we will go to the interface context of the dual port connected APs port in the switch and will enable the LLDP authentication trigger via the source MAC address rather than the default chassis MAC address. So this will be the new colorless port configuration going forward. So this configuration can be applied to all the endpoints connected ports and it works fine for the dual port APs as well as the other end clients. So here is the configuration in the dual port connected APs. So with that, let's check the configuration in both the ports and we'll onboard the dual port connected AP. So port access clients output. So if you could see here, there are two MAC address onboarded in the dual port connected AP. So the first MAC address is the E0's interface MAC address and the second MAC address is the E1 interface MAC address. So you can verify the same in the LLDP as well. So LLDP neighbors, so it will clearly shows the APs are sending the LLDP MAC address correctly. So the chassis MAC address remains the same for both the AP connected ports, but the source MAC address of the LLDP packet is different. So based on that, we have triggered the MAC authentication and onboarded the APs. So this is how the colorless port configuration will help us to onboard a dual port AP. So with that, we have come to the end of the session. Thank you everyone for watching this video. If you have any further queries, do reach out to us in our ADITS community. Thank you all once again. Bye.